No, it's not about money. And that's proven it's worth it. 生まれた子どもの数が過去最も少なかったことが厚生労働省の発表で。私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、私は、It was asked by my 22 year old French housemate, a Gen Z asked another Gen Z. I have to face this question one day, which I can't avoid, because all the news, all the data, and all the policies, it conveys only one common signal. This generation, we don't want to have a child. So the main policymakers nowadays think、oh, it's about inflation, the young people don't have time, they are busy, it's about money, or blah blah. Yes, they are the problem. Just a problem on the surface. If you are new here, my name is York. I'm single, a typical Gen Z, as all economists and policymakers on this planet are struggling with. And I will tell you in this video by asking three questions, which asked by a Gen Z like us: Why all government policies which aim to boost the birth rate, if nothing can be done, and why this line is infinitely close to zero, hopelessly? When I studied geography class when I in high school, at that time, it taught me most of developed countries maintain a lower birth rate than developing nations. As a Korean Chinese, I don't want to talk about East Asia so much. It still sucks. In the Western countries like U.S. and Europe, they are a little bit better than East Asia, but it still cannot stop this downturn. China and India are the largest demographies in the world, but they are not like that. Africa cannot make this line going up either. And Australia, which I currently live in, which embraced migrations for decades, still reported decline for three years straight. That means the textbook in my high school is now bullshit AF. It's a global issue. It's not about thing anymore. But let me show you something. A typical example in the East Asia. This graph shows the relevance between birth rate and economic growth, and this. Is the graph of national literacy rate. This is the core reasons which I want to talk about all the time, but it's always be ignored. It's not about money. It's about education. It takes ninety thousand years from hunter gatherer to farmer, ten thousand years to industrialization, two hundred years of automatic power, and fifty years of information age we currently live in. And right now, we are accelerating into AI. We are the group with the fastest growth digitally in the most complex and competitive environment. The knowledge we learned in one semester in high school nowadays is equal to the whole year in universities twenty years ago. That means at least there's one skill we are way better than every generation before: the ability of summarize the past and foresee the future. We understand much faster than last generation in the same field based on summarize the past in the information booming. We feel lost unprecedentedly just because we foresee the most uncertain and hazy future. I did ask my parent about the same question. Why did you have me? I don't know what your parent or grandparents think. Leave in the comments. Let me know. I think I get. She didn't get a really clear answer. Many experts nowadays believe the low birth rate is just because the young people like us are too much care about the cost of education. But what I think is still have the significant deficiency of these experts is the fact of low birth rate actually is the result of education. This is why the question I asked at the beginning of this video was actually asked by a 22-year-old university student instead of last generation like my mom, who just started consider this after getting married. I don't know any other nations, but in South Korea and China, I can heard a few comments which made by last generation. They said I maybe was not educated well like you did, but I still took effort to build a wealthy and modern world for you. You were happy and rich enough. 
why you don't get married and have a kid. In other words, in our lost generation's view, it's unfair. And think to Gen Z like us, a kind of selfish. But are we? So for this, I have to ask last generation again. Our parents' <laughs> okay, it seems like in my last generation, having a baby is an undoubtable kind of mandatory task in their life. It's not a choice. Yes, it's about a choice. If it's a choice, having a baby is just become one of our choices. That means it's not a mandatory anymore. I admit we are living in the most materially wealthy world. It made us have more choices than ever before. And it would directly cause these two factors. We start to consider the cost before making a choice. The second, we make sure this choice we made can benefit both of current us and the next generation. We got a good education, so I wish my child can get the same quality education too, or even get better. I can't represent all of us, but I believe most of us are still struggling with our lives in present and don't even talk about my next generations. It seems like you let me cross an unknown jungle or desert. I can't even guarantee I can get out of there alive, but you let me carry a child. I mean, even though I'm rich enough, even though I have time to raise my kid, it probably can kind of satisfy the feeling of accomplishment being a father or a mother. But do you really think your child will be satisfied with this too. It's not we are selfish, instead we are extremely responsible. The average marriage age in South Korea is from 20s to now 33 years old and still get older. We delay to make times to get an answer because it's huge and a tough responsibility. If we decide to get married or have a baby, we would try our best. Otherwise, don't do it. The modern education caused this. We started to use our next generation's view to look back on us, our current decision, and we start to compare the effects which we made between not having a kid and having a kid with random. Mm. Both of them have negative effects, but which one do you think which more harmful to our society? I don't wish to, to guarantee to my child the life quality is way better than that I have, but at least to prove the world we currently live in is worse to experience one time. I'm from a middle class family, and my family is extremely poor at the beginning, and gradually they took efforts to make their life and my childhood fulfilled and wealthy. When they were my age, everything is developing and growing. Even though they are not rich enough, but they still believe the future is hopeful. That's why they have me. And I still can see the hope in their eyes until now. But do we? I believe one day we can be wealthy like my parents did, by our effort, by our hands. But please think in front of the screen you are watching right now. Economic growth here over the last 20 years. Even though you are capable of rich enough to buy a house and a car. It's the northwest of the country. Even though the government pay you the enough child care subsidy. Are you still willing to bring your love to this world we live in? The thing is, we will already be well educated. This is the side fruit of economic miracle in the past decades, and it's never gonna go back. Many people say we are the lost generation. Indeed, we feel lost because we are sick certainty in uncertainty. We feel lost because we're stuck in the gap between present and the future. We feel lost because we take time to figure out the key point of making a decision while taking the responsibility. I know we have a lot of problem, and every generation does. But what I know is, it's always figureoutable. 
Hope you like this video. I'm Yoke. I'm Gen Z. See you in next one.